munchies, welcome if you're new. I'm Alicia and I am so happy to have you here. A few months ago, I did a low carb desserts episode and you guys wanted more. So now I have cookies. Mm. Oh, these cookies. Put that cookie down. No! I have six cookie recipes that are low in carbs and low in sugar, and if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna show you how you can get a free PDF with all the recipes. First up is a classic revised chocolate chip. I combine almond flour, baking soda, baking powder, and salt in one bowl. In another, I whisk together melted butter. Now, I chose grass-fed butter today because that's what a classic cookie calls for, but if you aren't a fan, coconut oil is fine. Eggs, erythritol, or a low-carb granulated sweetener of your choice, and vanilla extract. I stir the dry into the wet, and then I can mix in sugar-free chocolate chips. Or you could use cacao nibs if you really wanted to boost the nutrition. Transfer scoops of dough onto a baking sheet lined with parchment, Slightly flatten with your hand and bake until the edges begin to brown and allow to cool before enjoying. Holy moly, buttery, soft, and a tad cakey in the middle with a crisp edge and a nice balance of salty and sweet. That almond flour provides a nice nutty taste that I love and I think you will too. How about another classic, peanut butter? This one is so easy because it has just a few ingredients and some of you may have seen recipes like this before, but what you may not have realized is it's actually so easy to make it low carb. Combine peanut butter, a low carb sweetener, and I recommend using a powdered sweetener. If you don't have one, you can just blend up regular granulated sweetener in a blender, along with an egg and salt if your peanut butter isn't salted. Mix it up, I prefer my hand mixer for this dough, and then scoop out the dough and transfer to your baking sheet. For the classic look, I use a fork to create the crisscross pattern and press those babies down. Bake them up, but don't let them brown too much. They will burn quickly. Then you can transfer to your baking rack and cool. If you are a peanut butter cookie fan, these will not disappoint. They've got a crisp edge and a softer middle with a very potent peanut butter flavor since there's not much else to them ingredients wise. If you are noticing that these cookies seem higher in fat, you are correct. That is because typically when you take one macronutrient out, like carbs, you gotta add another back in, like fat. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. If you wanna learn more about a low carb lifestyle, check out my Keto 101 video. We're taking that recipe to the next level and making a low carb double chocolate chunk cookie. I combine almond or any nut butter you prefer, two eggs, cocoa powder, powdered sweetener, baking powder, and salt if needed with a hand mixer. Stir in some dark chocolate chunks, sugar-free if preferred. Dollop that dough, press down a bit, and bake in the oven. Again, cool on a baking rack before enjoying. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you an urgent announcement. It is time for you to subscribe. Not only that, but you must hit the bell. If you do not hit the bell, you will not be notified of new videos. I repeat, you will not be notified. Almond is a milder nut butter, so it pairs well with the cocoa without overpowering it. This is definitely a double chocolate cookie, dense and fudgy. We're going to the opposite side of the chocolate spectrum this time with one of my personal favorite classics, a white chocolate macadamia nut cookie. What is your favorite cookie? Let me know in the comments below. First, I've gotta make my white chocolate chips. This is a tough one for low carb because there aren't really any white chocolate chips that are sugar-free or low carb on the market that I know about. If you do know about them, let me know. Either way, I'm showing you how to make your own now. Melt down cacao butter and coconut oil. Add that to a blender with dry whole milk powder, powdered sweetener, and a pinch of salt. Use a baster or syringe to transfer to your chocolate chip mold, or a bar mold is fine, and then refrigerate until hardened. Pop those babies out and then store in the freezer until you're ready to use. For the cookie, I combine almond flour, baking soda, baking powder, and salt in one bowl, and butter, eggs, sweetener, and vanilla in another. I add the dry to the wet, and then can stir in my chopped macadamia nuts. Once I have the dough, I dollop onto the baking sheet and press. But wait, what about the white chocolate? 
because these melt quickly, you'll wanna add them to your cookies frozen. I just throw them on top last minute before they go in the oven. Bake those babies up and observe and acknowledge how great you are for making such a delicious cookie. Macadamia and white chocolate means salty and sweet together, a perfect cookie pairing in my opinion. Soft in the middle, a crispy edge, and the almond flour makes it extra nutty. We've done a lot of cooking so far. What about a no-bake cookie? Do you want a no-bake cookie recipe? If you do, thumbs up. Okay, so you know I'm gonna give it to you anyway, but the least you can do is give me a dang thumbs up. I add unsweetened coconut shreds, coconut oil, liquid sweetener of choice. I'm using a liquid fiber syrup that I will link in the description, but you can use any liquid sweetener, vanilla extract, and salt. Mix it super well, and then use damp pans to form into your cookie shapes. Let those babies firm up in the fridge. Say what? These are a bit addicting, so it may be best to keep them frozen and thaw out when you're ready to eat. Okay, I've got one more today. Last but not least, shortbread cookies. Low carb edition, these are so easy. Combine butter and sweetener with a hand mixer. Add in vanilla and salt, then you can beat in your almond flour about a third at a time. If the dough ends up too crumbly or dry, consider adding one more tablespoon of melted butter. Scoop out compressed spoonfuls of dough, form them into your cookie shape, and add to a cookie sheet. Flatten slightly on top. These won't spread much, so flatten them before they go in. Bake in the oven until the edges are golden brown. Cool completely on the tray before serving. Holy Toledo! These actually taste just like a shortbread cookie. Not too dry or dense, buttery, not a biscuit, but truly a cookie. I hope you enjoyed these. If you want easy access to these, I have a... I have a free PDF for my newsletter subscribers. If you are already subscribed, you already got the email with the link, but if you aren't already subscribed, go subscribe at mindovermunch.com for free and you'll get that ebook to your inbox for free. My munchies, in case you didn't see last week's video or haven't seen my Insta story, I need to let you know that I have created more free content for you in the form of courses. So an entire course on inflammation and creating your anti-inflammatory diet, as well as one on healthy staples, helping you choose healthier bread Beds, milks, oils, and more. Links are in the description, or you can go to inflammationcourse.com or healthystaplesguide.com and enroll for free. You can get both of them for free. You don't have to pick just one. All you have to do is put your email in and you will get access to that content. Thank you, and I'll see you next week. I'll see you next week, and remember, especially when it comes to cookies, it's- It's all a matter of mind over munch. <laughs>